What's up, YouTubers? It's your girl, Nick, coming to you, giving you an update on what's going on in my life with the Vivance um, for the treatment of my binge eating disorder, um, as well as my ketogenic, uh, ketogenic diet journey and weight loss journey. So I've been on Vivance for, I think, 19 weeks now pretty much don't have anything new to report with this. Um, you guys let me know if you want me to keep giving you updates about the Vivance because I feel like I'm reporting a whole bunch of nothing <laughs> at this point. Um, for after 19 weeks, um, I did initially have some insomnia the first 24 hours of being on Vivance. Occasionally, like once in a blue moon, I'll have a couple seconds of like palpitations. Um, and I continue to have dry mouth um, but outside of that, I've been doing really well tolerating the Vivance fine, um, with starting a ketogenic diet. So this is going into my fourth week, going into my fourth week of keto. Um, I've noticed, um, I've missed my Vivance a couple days and there really wasn't a difference between a day that I was on Vivance versus a day that I was off of Vyvanse. And now I don't know if that's just because, oh, I missed one pill here and one pill there, that it really had an effect. Um, part of me wants to possibly trial off of it to see if the keto holds me. Um, and then part of me doesn't because <laughs> I'm scared of like going back to really, 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 really struggling with the binge eating disorder. So um I still notice a difference when it is what I've learned a new term called shark week. <laughs> so when it is, you know, the week right leading up before and up to my monthly cycle. Um, and if, and you guys think this is TMI, I'm sorry, but I do think it's important because there's a correlation for me, at least that my binges, um, I can be triggered by hormone changes. So I noticed that week before leading into the week of my cycle that, I do have more of an appetite, and historically, that has also triggered me to binge more um, during that time period as well. So this is going into week four of keto. Um, I've noticed, I've seen the increased mark in hunger the last like couple days. I've definitely been more hungry than I normally have been. Um, when I first started keto, I was like my normal hunger, and then the last week or so, I've noticed. Uh, my hunger has level has dropped a little bit um, where I, I go longer periods of not being hungry um, and I eat get fuller faster off of what I've been eating. Um, I'm still struggling though. Like I don't want you guys to think that just because I'm doing three things. So just because I'm doing therapy, just because I'm on Vyvanse and just because I'm doing keto that I don't still struggle with the binge eating disorder. I definitely still struggle with it. Um, I'm noticing with, I guess my body's becoming more fat adapted. So that's when they know, they say that people say, cause there's no like official person for the keto, but, um, people say that when you become fat adapted, you notice a decrease in your hunger. So I've noticed that decrease in my hunger, but I still struggle with wanting to eat, even though I'm not hungry. And I haven't had a binge since I started keto. But I recognize like the beginning stages of starting to want to binge, if that makes sense. So it's like a little bit more than it's a little bit more than just overeating or wanting to eat. It, there's that little compulsory piece to it where it's like, oh, I must eat. I must eat. I want to eat and kind of trying to turn that off to where I don't eat. Um, sometimes I'll, I use distraction as a big tool for that um, with my binges. Um, I'll go, you know, if I am, all I can think about is I want to eat, I want to eat. I'll, you know, put something really interesting on TV. Like this is the reason why my husband makes fun of me, but this is the reason why I watch a lot of ratchet TV because it's entertaining and it gets my mind off of wanting to eat or I'll go do a chore in the house. I know it's not fun, but it works. So, you know, I'll go and I'll start a load of laundry or I will fold a load of laundry or I'll go clean the bathroom or I'll go clean the kitchen. Um, anything to help pass that time, pass those urges. And I find that it doesn't always work, but I find that distraction works pretty well with me. 
um, along with my 10 my 10 minute rule. It's kind of, they kind of go hand in hand. So my 10 minute rule is I get the urge to binge. I tell myself, okay, I'm going to wait 10 minutes. I am not going to eat anything. I'm going to wait 10 minutes and see how I am. Then if I hit that 10 minutes, okay, it's been 10 minutes. Let's see if I can go another 10 minutes. And I keep extending that um, until, you know, it's time to go to sleep. That's the idea of how it works. Does it always work? No, it doesn't always work. Does it work most of the time? Usually, yeah. So a combination of the 10-minute rule, sorry, I'm talking a lot with my hands today. <laughs> the combination of the 10-minute rule and distraction um, are two techniques that I found that really, really, really helped me uh, with the binge eating disorder and even with overeating because there's, for me, I don't know about you guys, you have to let me know, there's a difference between me overeating and binging. Um, overeating is, oh, okay, I'm just grazing, I keep eating, not really hungry, but I just want to eat. Whereas for me, binges are very compulsory, meaning that I have these obsessive thoughts about, I need to eat, I need to eat, I need to eat. I can't think about anything else but eating. And once I start eating, I have to, I just keep stuffing myself and stuffing myself and stuffing myself until I'm like really uncomfortably full, almost to the point where I'm sick. I haven't thrown up before and hopefully I never throw up for my binges because that's going to be a whole other issue. Um, I don't, I don't purge, but, um, but obviously I do binge. So I'm not sure where I was going with that. I lost my train of thought, but so distractions and waiting 10 minutes definitely are two things that help with dealing with the binge eating. Um, like I've said before, I've noticed being on keto has helped as well with the binges. I think it's the combination. I'm sure the Vyvanse is helping as well. I feel like the Vyvanse helps binge eating disorder because it curbs your appetite, thus taking away kind of the cues to, oh, I'm supposed to eat, which then trigger the binge eating. Um, I feel that the Vyvanse helps that way. And I kind of feel like keto works along the same lines as where you're, you're so full because of the fat they're eating because keto is high fat, moderate protein, very low carb. So I feel like the fat keeps you fuller longer and kind of works the same way as the Vyvanse. Um, but uh, it's, in my opinion, it's healthier than, than a stimulant than Vyvanse. Um, but it helps in that same kind of way where it takes away that hunger, which takes away that drive. Oh, I need to eat something. Well, since I'm going to eat, I need to go eat X, Y, Z in half of the kitchen. So I feel like it really helps those two things go along hand in hand. Um, I definitely recommend therapy uh, as as well with treating binge eating disorder. Um, it will help you with positive thinking because a lot of body dysmorphia goes along with eating disorders, um, along with binge eating disorder. Um, so it helps you with those negative thoughts and reframing them. I use a lot of reframing. Um, you know, like for, for an example, if you want an example of reframing. So I will have thoughts of, well, I should have, and should statements are really bad, but I should have lost more weight by this point in time. Um, but now reframe it as, no, you've come a long way. You've lost this amount of weight at this point. That's really great. You're you're going along the same pattern. You're consistently losing. Yes, you go up and down, you up and down. But the trend, overall trend is that I'm losing. So I try to reframe things in a positive light like that. And that has helped me a lot as well with dealing with other issues along with binge eating disorder. So therapy has helped me with that as well as digging into some of those past painful traumas, as my therapist likes to call them, um, that have triggered my binge eating disorder and my binge eating in the past and in, you know, currently. So I definitely think the combination of the Vyvanse and therapy and keto have definitely helped to bring me to a healthier place. Um, I'm doing pretty good since the last time I made a video, it's been a little over a week and I'm, I'm really sorry, guys, things are really hectic in my life right now. Um, but since my last video, I've lost two pounds or three pounds, can't remember, two or three pounds. Um, so I'm getting really, really, really close to, um, Wonderland, which is not Wonderland like Alice in Wonderland, but Wonderland as in the number one Wonderland. 
Um, and for you guys that don't know what Wonderland is, it's when you're under 200 pounds. So I'm getting really, really close. Um, my current weight is 204.8 pounds. So in five pounds, I will reach Wonderland. I'm really, really excited. Uh, I'm actually getting, I'm big on t-shirts. Um, so I'm getting a t-shirt custom made for me um, to wear once I reach Wonderland that says like made it to Wonderland. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I am uh, two pounds away from my next uh, reward. So I reward myself every five pounds. Um, I do have also stones that I have in two jars. And maybe in my next video, I'll show you guys the stones again. Um, one jar says the amount of weight I want to lose. And I just arbitrarily picked 100 pounds, put 100 decorative stones in there. Every time that I lose a pound, I move a stone over to the other container that says pounds lost. So there's a visual representation of how much weight I've lost. I've also made a chart, excuse me, um, listing all my weights. And every five pounds, I reward myself with a non-food reward, which is really a great motivator. If you guys can afford to do it, they can be small rewards. They don't have to be big. Um, but I have things on there like a manicure or go get a pedicure or... Um, at 30 pounds, I rewarded myself with getting a haircut and my hair dyed because um, I like my funky colors. You guys can't really tell, but I have purple in my hair. Um, so at 30 pounds, I got that. At 35 pounds, I rewarded myself with a facial. Um, I think 40, 45, I think is something small. I think it's a manicure again. I don't, I'm not in my office, so I don't have that in front of me to check. But, you know, I'm, I'm getting really close to, you know, two very big goals. I'm getting very close to being to Wonderland. And I'm getting very close to 50 pounds, which is huge. Um, so those two things keep me motivated. And you guys help find things to, to keep you motivated. You can do the stones. They really help me a lot in visual, visualizing what's going on. My husband has brought the stones out. When I'm having a pity party, and I'm like, I don't feel like I'm doing that great. I feel like I'm just getting started. I haven't made that much process. <coughs> Excuse me, progress. And my husband literally will go get the stones that I've lost and he'd be like, does this look like you just started? And I'm like, no. So sometimes I need that reality check. So the stones definitely have helped. The reward chart has definitely helped um, keep me motivated as well. I share my progress with my friends on Facebook. Um, partly because I feel like it keeps me accountable. And then partly because it is nice to hear from people who are your friends and family and that love you. Saying, you know, good job. Way to go. Keep it going, girl. Looking good. Like, those things do help. And it's not really seeking attention. It's sharing my journey with people and getting that feedback with them. Because sometimes I can't see it. You know, I, I have body dysmorphia issues and I can't always see my progress and see how far I've come. So sometimes I need outside people to, to tell me, you know, you've come a long way. You've got, you know, you've, you've made it very far. Like it's been, since October, since I started this weight loss journey. So it's been what, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So it's been seven months um, since I started my weight loss journey. And yes, I would have liked to have lost, you know, more weight by now. I probably like in a dream world, I would have loved to have lost like 70 pounds in seven months. I've lost 43 um, so of course I would have lo loved to have lost more weight by now, but you know, I'm looking at this, I have to reframe it as this is a marathon. It is not a sprint. I didn't get overweight overnight for the most part, because <laughs> there were some times where I did literally put on weight super fast, but I didn't get this way overnight. It's not going to reverse overnight. You know, I try to stay focused on why I'm doing this. So I don't know if I've shared this with you guys, but the reason why I am losing weight and it's not even because of all my health issues. You would think, because I have all these health issues, I just celebrated my 35th birthday last week. You guys have told me I don't look 35, but I really am 35. Um, you would think that because I have all these health issues at my age, that that would have been motivation enough for me to get healthy. No, it wasn't. Even being almost pre-diabetic, I was 0.1 away from being pre-diabetic. You would think that would have you know, scared me into it. Not really. Um, what really motivated me was the fact that my husband and I were talking and we always talked about having a kid and, you know, we settled on a time and when we're going to start trying to start a family. And 
that really kicked my gear and my butt into gear because I'm like, you know what? I have all these medical conditions, so I'm not the healthiest person. I have a strong family history of stuff like cardiac disease and diabetes. I want to give my body and my child the best chance that I can to be healthy. So in order to do that, I need to lose weight before we start trying for a kid. Because if I'm not healthy, my kid's not going to be healthy. I'm not going to have a healthy pregnancy. I'm going to have all these complications. So I need to do everything in my power to make sure that my pregnancy is as healthy as it can be so I can give my child the best chance that they can have in, in life. So that is what is my motivation for losing weight. You know, just focusing on that. I'm trying to lose as much weight as I can before we start trying to have a kid. I still have, it's May. I still have like eight months left before we start trying for a kid. So I got eight months left to see how much weight I can drop. I'll still continue until I'm pregnant to lose weight. Um, Once I'm pregnant, I'll just try to maintain and minimize how much I gain. Um, I will talk to my OBGYN at that point on whether or not to continue keto when I'm pregnant, but I might have to raise my carbs up a little bit more, but still do very low carb because, excuse me, my endocrinologist told me, you know, because of my history and because my family history of diabetes, I have a 20% increased chance of having gestational diabetes. So I don't want to be like other family members who, you know, are either diabetic now or, you know, I have a family member who's dealing with gestational diabetes and her pregnancy is on insulin. I don't want to be like that. Um, I do have a glucose monitor. This is my my tag here. I got to change it, I think, today. Um, I do have a glucose monitor that I start wearing the sensor for. Um, just to monitor my blood sugars to see how they've been going. They they are pretty good on keto. Um, there's been like a few times where it goes above 100. Um, it should be 70 to 100. There's a few times it goes above 100, which really, that's actually not that bad because when you eat, obviously your sugar levels are going to go up and then insulin brings it back down. So the fact that I'm doing keto and which is very low carb, and I'm eating, and my sugar still really never goes above 100, that is awesome for my sugar levels um, and for my hemoglobin A1C. So I'm hoping, you know, with my doctor, my endocrinologist said, you know, in three months of being on keto, I should be able to get my A1C from 5.6, which is like just barely normal, to like 5.2. So I'm really, really excited that my blood sugars are showing that they're staying within reason. They're not getting too low and they're not really getting high at all. I think the last time I checked my meter, um, like 89 or 90 percent of the time, my glucose level stays between 70 and 100, which is awesome. So I know that keto was working for me for for the health benefits of dealing with my insulin resistance and keeping my blood sugars and an acceptable range. So I know keto is working because I'm checking my blood sugar every day, multiple times a day. So I know it's working for me and I'm seeing weight loss. So I know it's working for me and I feel great. I have a lot of energy. I don't have any mental issues as far as clarity or feeling fog or anything. So I know this way of life is working for me. Um, it is not for everybody. I will say that it is not for everybody. There are some medical conditions you should not be doing keto for. You should always get the the okay from your doctor before you start any diet. Um, but I highly recommend it for for anybody who's trying to decrease inflammation, try to lose weight, deal with your blood sugars levels, try to get your cholesterol on check, try to get your, your um, high blood pressure down. I highly recommend it for everybody. So I know I'm going off on a tangent talking about keto, but you know I'm just really excited that I'm seeing changes. I'm seeing things working for me. Um, I'm really excited that the unexpected benefit of it helping with my binge eating disorder. I really wasn't expecting that. Um, so I am thinking about trialing off of the Vyvanse to see how I do. I need to talk to my health provider on whether or not I can just stop the Vyvanse or if I need to wean down to a, a 30 milligram, because I'm on 50 milligrams, wean down to 30 milligrams and then off to, um, to see how I do. So, I mean, if I can get off more meds, that's great because I'm going to have to get off all these meds when we start trying for a kid anyway. So, um, and I never saw the Vyvanse as a long-term solution. I always saw it as a short-term solution to kind of hold me while I deal with the underlying issues that are causing me to binge. So this was never an idea for me to be on Vyvanse forever anyway. So with that being said, this is probably my longest video ever. 
Um, but that's what's going on with me. So I'm doing great with my weight loss. I've lost another two or three pounds. I'm down to 204.8. Um, hopefully in the next month or so, I should get to Wonderland, which I'm really excited for. Um, excuse me, my nose is itching. Um, Vyvanse is holding me, not having any terrible side effects. Um, my job is going okay. Um, as you guys know, in my last video, I got hired back on my old job, but working for our sleep department and the pulmonology department. Um, things weren't going so great with the training for pulmonology. So I ended up talking to my bosses and I will just be working with the sleep department. So I'll, my hours are going to be cut down a little bit more. Or right now I'm only going to be working one day a week. Um, in the fall that I'll get up to two and then I'll, as they need me to fill in in between, I'll fill in in between. So hopefully I, I'll be back on my schedule of doing these videos weekly, getting them done. We're moving in like a week and a half. So things are a little crazy from that. So I apologize for the delay in these videos. I appreciate you guys spending the time to watch my videos. Please give me any feedback. If you have any questions, please put them down below comments down below. If there's any topics you want me to talk about, let me know and I will talk to them about them to the best of my ability. See you guys next week. Have a good day. Bye.